Phantomaniacs, welcome to the newest unboxing here on the Needless Things YouTube channel. Today we are taking a look at the Cobra Knight Attack 4WD Stinger, the all new release in the retro O-ring line, potentially part of the Retroverse. And this review is brought to you by Audible Interlude, a G.I. Joe podcast available wherever you get your podcasts each and every Friday. Uh, this I'm very excited about this. I am hoping this signifies a commitment to a new O-ring line, whether that's just available on Hasbro Pulse, uh, which I would prefer to it being like a Walmart exclusive because, ugh. uh, box is gorgeous. We have the, uh, the art looks beautiful on the front. It's a nice throwback to the original box art. Uh, you've got the simulation of the little window that would be on the original boxes, and this is Cobra Enemy. Side of the box. Oh, and also worth pointing out, uh, we do have multiple languages, but only uh, down here by the figure, the Cobra Officer, which I want to say the original, and I do not have an original Stinger right now in my collection. Uh, and depending on how great this is, I, I may not even bother. I don't know. I'll, I'll be interested to see how that goes. Uh, I feel like this was Cobra Driver in the original release. I'm not positive, but I, I don't think it was Cobra Officer. Uh, this is not the sort of knowledge my brain has maintained uh, in my 46 years of existence. Uh, on the back of the box, we've got the terrible file card with all the different languages on it. Uh, not a fan of this. And nothing more to say there. Uh, and then a little picture of the vehicle itself. And really, we just got to open it up now and take a look at the thing. Uh, the box definitely brings back that nostalgia. There, There's some modern stuff on it that disrupts that a little bit. Uh, but, you know, it, it's you, you take the good, you take the bad, you take them both, and there you have the facts of toy collecting. Uh, and I did order I, the limit of two of these back when they first went on sale. I don't know. They went on sale again on 1027, I think it was, for Hasbro's uh, big, well, <laughs> I'm not going to say big, for Hasbro's little news event that they did. Uh, which, by the way, you can hear the G.I. Joe news on the newest episode of Audible Interlude this Friday. Uh, or if you watch the live stream we did on the Needless Things YouTube channel last night. All right. Instructions are fairly simple. I do love, though, something to put together. I miss putting toys together, and I am absolutely delighted that I have the opportunity to do a little assembly here. Uh, interesting thing about the label sheet... Uh, and we just we go into more depth with this on the newest Audible interlude episode, which, for, like I said, Friday you can find wherever you get your podcasts, and it should, I think, by now it might be available here on the channel, uh, the video version. Uh, but anyway, let's get this guy out of here and see what we've got going on. Uh, you'll notice these are the sort of twine ties, uh, which I very much prefer to the plastic ties of any kind. In general, if you haven't heard it from me before, I'm a fan of the plastic-free packaging. Uh, not even as much for environmental reasons, uh, but because it does less damage to the toys inside the packaging. Uh, and that's pretty important to me, and I would think would be important to every collector, or at least collectors who open their uh, open their toys. All right. So our little pieces of rope easily snip through. Let's set that cardboard aside. Uh, and let, we'll go ahead and take a look at the driver, excuse me, the Cobra officer, as they say. So I've got to go off memory. Oh, you know what? No, I don't. Ha! In this instance, my creaky old brain was serving me well uh, because this, the original 1984 version, is indeed the Cobra Stinger Driver and not the Cobra Officer. Uh, but let's take a little look 
And obviously we've already gotten this before in the form of the Cobra officer that came in the two pack. Uh, this is just a different paint job, but look at that side by side. Uh, one improvement that I appreciate, or in my personal opinion is an improvement. Uh, the Cobra symbol is a little bit larger on that chest. Although the reason for that, if you notice his web gear is a little smaller on this new guy, a little thinner. And I think it actually looks a little better on the original. Um, the eyes have a little there. The detail is a little bit finer. The straps on the legs, uh, holding that dagger in place. Looks good. Looks really good. Um, the shoulders on the original actually look a little better though. Uh, this one, his torso is a bit narrower and his shoulders are a bit bigger. And this, you know, maybe this was because I did review that two pack. Uh, you can find it here on the channel. And maybe it's not as noticeable in the darker blue, but in the gray, to me, it stands out that his shoulders are a little more bulbous and honestly don't look quite as good. It's not a huge deal. It's fine. But the original figure, I've got to say, looks a little bit better. Uh, but this guy, on his own, uh, still fantastic. All the articulation does what it's you know meant to do. Uh, those thumbs are not going to break off. You've got the knees. Now this does appear to have the same issue that that officer had, where those knees just don't want to bend all the way. Uh, the solution I came up with, and this is interesting, I don't think I noticed this on the blue one either, is we've got left and right designated on there. Uh, I heated mine up for 30 seconds, bent them as far back as they would go, left them, let it cool down, straightened them out, heated up for 30 seconds again, although I'm noticing, and we'll just go ahead and do this here. It's actually pushing that plastic up a little bit. Yeah, that's not great. I, I kind of see more what people were complaining about uh, with the other officer. Whereas, like I said, with mine, I heated the knees and they really, I got to a nice 90 degree bend and it wasn't a problem. Although now I'm guessing what probably happened is I heated it up and bent them and it actually stretched this plastic a little bit to allow it to be more pliable and, and move. But anyway, I'm going to do the same thing with this guy. Uh, I'm sure he'll be fine. But the thing to remember is his knees don't really need to bend because he sits in the car like that. All right. So let's take a look. Oh, and the colors, uh, all, everything is beautifully applied. All the colors are where they should be. Uh, the, the figure does look very, very nice. All right. Let's take a look at our vehicle. Here is the chassis. You've got the old school metal rod, uh, holding those tires in place and... There's no squeak. One of the signatures of the old vamp model vehicles uh, was that squeak that they would make. But this one rolls nicely and freely uh, and looks really good. You've got the uh, wheels are actually a different color from the tires, which is nice. I mean, that's as it should be. But, you know, with things these days, you never quite know where and how they might cheap out. Uh, and then all of the detail uh, that you've got in here, the sculpt, is just fantastic. Uh, this is one of the great toy vehicles, without a doubt. I mean, I include the Vamp, the Mark II, the Stinger, and all the iterations that we got uh, in that. It's, it's simple, and yet it's so satisfyingly fun. And this one, uh, definitely an upgrade over the original Vamp because of the features that we'll take a look at in a minute. So I'm gonna follow the instructions here. Uh, I've gotta open up our paper bag full of accessories. Oh, look at all that stuff. Love it, love it. Look at all this stuff I get to put together. This was such a critical part of the toy experience when I was a kid. I mean, it really, really was. Uh, okay, so we have the back panel. 
steering or the uh, front console. Let's get this other stuff out of the way until we need it. Oh, we got to put the steering wheel on. The steering wheel, you all know probably uh, what a challenge it is to find one of these vehicles with a nice intact steering wheel. Uh, and what you've got here is just a little peg system. We'll have to squeeze it in. And this is a softer plastic than the originals were made with. So the chances of this steering wheel uh, breaking are definitely lesser. So there you go. That pops right in there. Get your steering wheel good to go. Hmm. It kind of doesn't sit in place very well, though. I don't remember the old ones being like that. Okay, so this front console, again, you've got another, you've got a hole and a uh, very simple cross peg right there. So that is just going to attach and plug right into place. There you go, easy enough. And then for the uh, back panel, same kind of situation, you've got a couple of pegs. And that just slides right into place. And you've actually, if you can see these line up, you get a little bit of force to get it all the way up and you'll actually get a satisfying click uh, as these tabs slide up into those slots. And there you go. Oh, look at this thing. Such a nice design. So much fun. Such a good toy. Uh, okay. Now, I'm going to go back to this part. And we've got this front assembly business here. Uh, looks like kind of a light rig type deal. Let's see. Oh gosh, the engine. Oh wait, no, no, no. This, this is up next. Well, this is just, I guess this is just going to sit here until, because this hooks into this front part right here. So I guess we'll just leave that sitting there. Uh, and then we have our little bar for our troops to hang on to when they're riding on the back. And that plugs into place. And again, you get a little bit of a satisfying pop when it sits into place. Uh, and then this was such an upgrade it's funny it's it, you wouldn't think this would be that big a deal but making this an enclosed vehicle versus the vamp which did not have uh these doors and this cover was such a massive upgrade for the mark ii and for the stinger uh, it really just made a difference in how cool this vehicle seemed uh, and i love this gray i believe the original stinger uh, was a much, I think this was a darker gray. I don't think it was black. I don't believe it totally matched uh, the rest of the vehicle. But this gray looks really, really nice. I, I like it quite a bit. Uh, okay, so we've got this set to go. Now where does... Okay, we don't do that part yet. So we've got two holes back here. And in the front, this is going to snap into place here. So I'm going to start with that. Get those two guys into place. There we go. And then we just push this down. And this is all, this plastic feels really nice. There we go. Oh man, look at that, you guys. How cool does that look? That light gray is just fantastic. Uh, the gray and black looks really, really good. Uh, I actually like... Oh, you know what? The doors... 
Oh, this is interesting. Wait a minute. Oh, I messed up. Okay, let's get those doors opened up. This should be outside of that. No, that can't be right. Oh, yeah. That goes, and then those slot in right there. And see, this is the advantage of this being that more pliable plastic as opposed to the ABS. I mean, this stuff I, I'm assuming is PVC. And there you go. So those, this is outside. Um, it does not go in there. Although I will say if this was ABS, it wouldn't have, it would have slid into the right place on its own. I wouldn't have had to figure that out. But anyway, uh, these panels go over the, they overlap, they slide into slots here behind the wheel wells or around the wheel wells and then they go over the top of this gray part so then that's how you get that look so yeah that looks much much better fantastic okay always a nice learning experience here on the needless things youtube channel uh we want our missile rack let's see which way this face is. well it's not going to matter i guess well, yeah, it will, because this is, one of these pieces is the front, one of these pieces is the back. So, looking at the instructions here, it does not really give you assembly instructions for the missile rack, but you can tell from the shape that we're looking at, Because I imagine it is somewhat important to get this facing the right way. It looks like this is the front. Although I gotta say, nothing really matches the diagram that's in, in the instructions. Yeah, that piece looks pretty different. <laughs> so if you. I realize I'm wasting a lot of time on this, but it does seem like a bit of an oversight. Uh, this, none of those forms are really on, because you can see neither way does it really match. Uh, but I would guess this is sort of a stop. Let's try it. So this is the front. And it, moves kind of freely that way so there's not a a stop either way this rotates completely freely no matter which way you assemble it uh but i'm gonna do it how i thought it was originally and have this there we go facing towards the front man go that clips into place yeah see it, it really doesn't matter there's no it just rotates all the way around so pop that in oh there we go okay yeah that does clip into place nicely uh one big improvement in my opinion is these rockets are all one piece now so rather than having this like back piece that's separate that I just didn't really ever make sense to me, they're all one piece. And I think that's a great improvement. And they're all red, uh, which maybe isn't quite as toyetic or visually striking, but it still looks cool. Oh, interesting. Did they print, rather than having labels, they printed the identifiers on the missiles i like that quite a bit uh because stickers on rounded surfaces like that just over time they're just not going to look good at some point uh so i definitely prefer that these are printed 
rather than expecting me with my big clumsy fingers to apply stickers that are going to look good forever and ever. Or at least as long as I'm alive. And look at that. That is the stinger. Uh, it feels good. It does, I'm not going to lie, it does feel a little cheaper than, oh yeah, we've got another printed part here. And look, again, on a rounded surface, uh, they went with a tampo on this rather than a sticker that we have to apply. I really appreciate that. I think that's a very good decision on Hasbro's part. Uh, it feels It feels a little cheaper than the original. But it looks fantastic. It's going to look great on the shelf. I do still need an original because I do believe this is significantly different in appearance. But I'm okay with that. Because if I'm going to buy a bunch of new O-rings, I would like for there to be some little improvements, little differences, uh, some changes made to the product. So I am not going to make you sit here and watch me put the labels on so we'll uh we'll come back with that all right we're back and there are a few things that i wanted to point out here uh it's interesting that the label sheet is numbered and the blueprints are not uh it's also interesting that both sides of the missiles uh are supposed to be labeled but obviously, as I mentioned, the we've got tampos on one side, but I did have to apply stickers to the other side. So my guess is that's a cost thing, is when these are on the assembly line, they can roll them through and, and print on one side of them, and it would be cost prohibitive to print this on both sides. So they went with the one side, but now you've got labels on one side and tampo on the other, and it doesn't match. Uh... I honestly would prefer it if they were just labels on both sides, uh, as the instructions suggest is supposed to be the case. Uh, this tampo right here is actually on the label sheet as a sticker and is included as a sticker. So that's an interesting little difference in final production and, and I guess uh, when they were printing the instructions for it and then finally the last thing i wanted to point out was you do have this sticker that goes on the glove box here and i didn't give you guys a close enough look at this by the way look at how beautiful this instrument panel is this is really fantastic uh this is a great piece uh but do yourself a favor do what i did and reach in there and just or put the label on now that you know and knowing is half the battle uh you know put the label on before you assemble the the car or just reach in there and this slides you know just that peg right there so it slides right back into place and right off it's not a big deal to remove that although if you have big goofy adult hands it might be a bigger deal to get it back in <laughs> oh boy there we go goes right back into place. And as you can see, those labels make such a difference in the look of this vehicle. I mean, it really does take it from cool looking toy to, to GI Joe vehicle. Uh, these are all very solid stickers. I like the way that they engineered them. They have a little, they're a little forgiving. You can get it if you get them about halfway down, you're like, oh, wait, that's not straight. You can pull it back up and get it back down. And it, it will uh, peel fairly nicely. And I think that's a combination of the way the stickers are engineered and the plastic uh, of the vehicle. And I got to say, I think I did one of the better jobs of applying these that I have ever done on a vehicle in my life, as far as how uh, centered everything is and how both sides sort of match up. Very proud of myself for that. If that's my biggest accomplishment of the week, uh, that's not too shabby. All right, let's see how this driver fits in here. Let's get our trash out of the way. Uh, as we mentioned, he, you don't really 
bend the knees very much on this guy. Just a slight bend to get him in. I haven't done this in so long. And that answers one of my questions right off the bat. Man, is he even going to get in there? Wow. Okay. <laughs> Are you kidding me with this? Ooh, man. That's snug. Uh, so I believe that was, is that how this fit in the original? Like I said, I don't have access to an original right now. That just seems like a really tight fit. And he certainly can't see to drive. But he's the same size uh, as as that original O-ring. So you guys tell me, because I, I don't have a memory of it being particularly difficult to get this driver in this vehicle. But I definitely don't have a memory. Like as a kid, I don't know that I would have cared that much how he fit into the vehicle but i mean is that is that smaller is that more compact than the original stinger you guys let me know i i do not recall but there you go he does fit in there uh oh i like the i just noticed it's got the rearview mirror up top here wouldn't it be great if there's a little sticker on that little mirrored sticker uh I mean, it works, but it does seem a little small for the figure, doesn't it? Very interesting. And that answers the question uh, that I know some of you would have. Will uh, modern figures fit into that? And that is going to be a, a hard no on that, I think. I don't... Man, what a... I'm shocked by this, to be honest. I don't know, once he's in there, you may not be getting him out. But yeah, there's no way you're going to get a 25th anniversary figure in this thing. I just don't think it's going to happen. Uh, so there you go. It's cool. Uh, a, a cool reproduction of a beloved toy from my youth. I think they did a really nice job. This could perhaps stand to be a little taller. I suppose, but other than that, it looks great. I'm going to put it on the shelf and be very happy with it. And uh, hopefully we have more O-ring figures and vehicles to come. 2023 is uh, reportedly going to be a big year for O-ring, but that remains to be seen. Thanks for watching, you guys. Please like, subscribe, share, tell your friends about Needless Things. Uh, and thank you all for getting us to a 1,000 subscribers. As always, he's just going to have to sort of Hold, hold his arm out for this one. Cobra. Smash that like button if you like needless things.